This is Marcus Korva with MMA Net, and we've uh, upgraded here from Hawthorne, California. We're now in Beverly Hills, California. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, we're still in Hawthorne, just switch location. And we got Dara Barinata with us and Taron Flash Ware. Uh, he's getting ready for his main event bout with Bama in about a month's time. We're going to talk about that in a bit. But it's Friday night here in Los Angeles, and we have, uh, we're have in the middle of the, the, the Bellator is over, the UFC, UFC is still going on, and mm -hmm. we're waiting for the results since we can't watch it since we're doing this for you. Um, thanks a lot, guys. It's fight night. It's fight night. Fight night 50. That's it's huge. It's 50 already. It's crazy. I mean, I, I hate can remember. The, I kind of hate that they changed the format, though. Do you? Now it's, it's like, it's hard to keep up with. With the numbers. It is, but like we talked about, I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, you can turn on the TV now and almost always catch some sort of yeah, UFC. That's pretty cool. And for a true MMA fan, not yeah. somebody that just follows the top 20 stars, it's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's one benefit to having all this MMA influx. And different channels, such as Spike with Bellator. We had Bellator. We'll just start with the right. WWE, sorry, Bellator. <laughs> <laughs> that went down tonight. Oh, <laughs> my God, I can't. We were sitting here. You brought it up on your phone yeah, so we could all see it. It's, it's Stefan Bonner and Tito Ortiz. I can't even call it a fight on national television. I think it was a scripted play. but I, I can't even. The only thing they were missing was the rock and Triple H. Yeah. That's what they were missing. That's very good. The like, masked man. What was that about? I don't what know. What was that about? I don't it's, know. It's my worst nightmare. <laughs> it's my worst nightmare. Right? It's my worst nightmare. I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm reluctant to watch Bellator ever again unless like Chandler's fighting maybe Pat Curran. But that was that. a that was a fight that the the Pitbull brothers have been here in Los Angeles training at Black House yeah. getting right. ready for this and uh, tight to fight and won unanimous decision. Oh, Mr. Pitbull, Pitbull. Won. He yeah. Won. Oh, yes. Nice. One of the the, the brothers, not the singer. And uh, <laughs> yeah, unanimous decision. Uh, four J. 47 on one card but 49 46 on two cards so <sighs> seems like it was a pretty um decisive win yes Definitely. and the the two two forces to come with both of them they're very very talented i've seen them work that's as well. the thing bellator has amazing talent mm -hmm. they still have i mean it's not like the ufc has every big name i mean i i flip on bellator and i recognize almost one star every every fight i watch it they have names it's just over dramatizing it with yeah. these charades it ruins it for me it really does and it's a shame because i i never wanted to see mma go that path because there's aspects of boxing this is just a personal opinion i watch boxing sometimes and i'm like uh, it, do it doesn't look as gritty and legit as mma and then i watch wwe and of course it's purposely not as gritty and legit as mma and then i turn on my ufc and i'm like fuck yeah some good yeah. fights you know what i mean and to turn on Bellator and see that tonight, I did, it wasn't cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like what they do with kind of with the storylines and stuff like that, how they go in depth and get let you get to know the fighters. But now with this whole thing where they're just doing, where it's just clearly fake. Yeah. Clearly, clearly fake. And these setup stages, it's like, yeah. it's, it's it's dumb. And it's, and they're they're ruining, they're, they're not going to ruin the sport because the sport's going to continue to grow, but they're going to ruin, they're going to ruin their brand and they're going to ruin... People are not gonna want to watch it. Like I love, like they have, they put on amazing fights. Like I, I like, I like watching the fights. A lot of the fights have some of the best fights. They're amazing. But when you do that, you make people, you know, they're gonna be turned off from it. I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to, you know, appeal to the casual fan, maybe someone who doesn't know about MMA. But it's like right. that's that's not how you do it. It's not. Now. There was some other drama going on last week. UFC, I know you're watching very closely. We had TJ Dillashaw finding a new opponent with uh, less than 24 hours notice since Barack couldn't make weight. Uh, me and Christos Giorgos were talking about that because we just went out when we did this last week. And um, Joe Soto went from having not only his first fight in the UFC, but that fight being a title fight for the UFC. Now, Tyron, had you won that fight against Soto, uh, in for the Tachi Palace belt, that would have been you. Possibly, very possible. Did you think about that a lot? I did. <laughs> that 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 immediately crossed my mind, and I felt like going to jump off a bridge. <laughs> but uh, I mean, good for him, you know. Um, you know, I felt the guy should have been in the UFC a long time ago. Um, he's a, he's a really good fighter. Um, it sucks what happened with his eye, whatever and whatnot. And he had his problems with his eye, and he got it fixed. Um, but um, you know, good for him. You know, um, you know, he's a good fighter. He's a really cool guy, and you know, he went out there and um, he put it on the line. And he felt like he did a really good job, and he, you know, um, I mean, the dude went from like 
300 followers on Instagram, so like 6,000 in one night. So, That's pretty you know, cool. it's pretty cool for him. It's good for him. He's a, he just had a kid. He's a family guy, so um, really humble guy. And he likes, you know, he, he trains hard and he fights. And um, so it's good for him. Yeah. Were you surprised by how well it did against TJ? Um, yeah, actually, I was. I mean, I really was. I mean, TJ, you know, you look at his last three fights, it's like the striking displays that he's put on against. You know, like Mike Easton, Hugo Viviana, and then against Barrow, which no one thought he was going to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I thought he was going to go out there and just pick him apart and maybe TKO him. And the, I, I thought Joe said, I mean, Joe said has a really good chin. I thought that he would, like, you know, last, you know, fourth, fifth round. I actually called fifth round knockout by TJ Dillashaw. Wow. But I didn't think I didn't think he would cut TJ under both of his eyes, bust his nose, and, and hit him with a lot of significant strikes the way he did. Because um, when I fought him um, – you know, I was, you know, and this is not to try to put them, put anyone down or anything like that, but I, you could see, you could see pictures after, right after my fight, my face was unscathed. You know, I didn't get touched, you know, so for, you know, for TJ to be busted up as he was, I was, I was very surprised, actually. Well, it's something to speak for that uh, Joe Soto is a noob to the UFC, but yeah. he is in no way, shape, or form a noob not to the all. sport. Not He's a all. veteran, so to speak, in MMA. So when I watched your fight against Joe Soto, I was beyond impressed just knowing joe soto as a fighter in the socal area yeah. i was super impressed by the way that you picked him apart on the feet and had he not taken you to the ground it you probably would have won um and then when i heard oh my god tj dillashaw versus joe soto yeah. i'm like oh my god this is even more experienced yeah. guy with similar style to terry on where yeah. uh this is gonna go down really bad for joe soto yeah. but that just, i mean i really think it speaks volumes for you as an athlete i think it says uh T.J. Dillashaw might look fancier, might have a different style that appeals more to audiences, but you have a solid style, boxing style specifically. Your head movement's amazing, and you can really go against heavy hitters and you know guys with tough chins like Joe Soto. Yeah, I mean, yeah, again, um, um, you know, watching that fight, I, again, I was, I was surprised. Um, and it, I mean, it did give me a confidence boost. You know, it still sucks that I lost it. I did want to win. You know, it was my shot to get into the UFC. You know, um, and I know. Um, I know my, I, I don't have another shot again. You know, I'll get on a winning streak and I'll get in there eventually. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, it kind of, you know, makes me wonder, puts that in the back of my head, just how good I actually am at this point right now. Right. You know, it was Joe Soto. You know, he turned pro in 2006. You know, I turned pro in 2012. You know, so for six me, years. yeah, so it's a six year gap where you know I'm still catching up, and you know, so for me to go out there and, and have that performance and then watch right. him do that against the number one guy in the world, you know, it gives me a, a, a bit of a confidence boost. It know? should. Yeah. It should. I mean, you're very well on your way to the UFC. Dana White, if you are listening, which we got to find out. We got to find out who our audience is. We got to get Dana White. You you know these guys in the SoCal area. Well, uh, well, when it comes to Sweden, the Sweden card is about to come up in October. Uh, uh, it they they tend the USC tends to tune in a little bit more because we were surprised a couple of times actually with with things like Alexander Gustafsson and so on where we Very got messages cool. saying hey you know watch this or Make sure you get that in there. That is uh, so cool. <laughs> nice. So they're good. They're obviously very good at both social media and, you know, anything to do with YouTube and anything that goes up. So they have their robots, the, test the, the tentacles out to make sure that <laughs> that they, uh, I would say the wrong word there. <laughs> <laughs> that, so they know what's going on. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think... You, you got another big fight coming up just from the Taicha Palace title mm -hmm. shot. Now you're going to defend your title for yeah. Bama October? Uh, October 10th. October yeah. 10th against Jeff Martin, who I train with quite a bit and, and actually did a chess boxing match against <laughs> once. And Jeff's a gamer, you know. It's just funny, you look at Jeff and... I was going to say, you could believe, you know, it looks like the type of guy that works in any doctor's office, and he does. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he is actually uh, working, is an x ray technician. And is he really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That He's is got a lot of fights, real game. Uh, definitely better on the ground, it's no secret that he's a jiu jitsu guy more so than a stand up guy. And uh, um, have you watched a lot of Jeff? Um, yeah, I watched a lot of his fights even before this because I was, I was scheduled, I was, it was rumored to fight him. Early on in my career, I was supposed to fight him. Um, the fight didn't happen for whatever reason. I forget which promotion it was. Um, but I actually sparred with him, too. I sparred with him at PKG at that time you were there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, 
you know, he, he's tough, man. I was, I was, he was, he, he came there to get some sparring. In. He had a fight coming up, um, and I jumped in there um, to, you know, to give him some rounds. Um, he was tough, but um, I mean, I think I have the advantage on the feet. I think I have that advantage over over, over most people, um, and um, well, in my weight class at least. Um, and um, I didn't get a chance to roll with him or grapple with him. But I seen him grapple, and um, I know he, he's a brown belt and. Um, um, he's, he has a really good ground, but um, my ground is ever evolving. You know, I've submitted black belts. You know, I I, I held my own against Joe Soto until getting submitted. Um, so I feel like you know, if we do go to the ground, I'm not worried about getting submitted. Um, I've been working on my strength and conditioning. I've been working on my ground game. So wherever the fight goes, I'm ready. And um, you'll probably probably be surprised. I'll take him down a couple times actually too as well. Nice. So. Where did you do all this training at? Um, <laughs> System training center, as a matter of fact. <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. <laughs> Now, I asked your teammate, Christos Yagos, when he came on my show, uh, does he really study for the specific fighter? And Christos is huge on that. What about you? Uh, I'm very different. We had this, me and Christos have a discussion before, too. He likes to, he likes to like, watch a lot of tape and study his opponents. Almost obsessed over his yeah, opponent. Yeah, I, I actually i am the complete opposite. I hate doing it. And the reason being um, because I, I did a lot of that in my amateur career. And okay. what would happen was is I ended up going six and six as an amateur. A lot of it was, dude, I fought a lot of tough guys, and they were more experienced than me. But a lot of it was I would go in having this complete structured game plan, mm -hmm. thinking this guy was easy to do this, do this. And I would find myself, and, and sometimes in fights, waiting for him to do that and would never come. And oh, they would God. do something completely opposite. You know, um, you know, for instance, when, uh, it was my, my, I think my 11th amateur fight. I fought a guy, um, Benji Gomez, um, and I watched all his fights, and he just – he all he did was box. He would box and avoid takedowns. Okay. And I had no idea this guy was like all was like, you know, state champion in high school for wrestling or whatever. So I'm going into the fight thinking we're gonna be a boxing match. And he took me down over and over repeatedly. I ended up losing the fight. Didn't take any damage. I did more damage than him. I actually broke my foot on his head, <gasps> kicking him in the head and I didn't take any damage in the fight, but I lost the fight because I I got taken down and repeatedly and i had no idea that that was going to happen he was going to be a good wrestler exactly you know so you know and i i felt like i won a lot of my fights based on like pure improvision and you know, during the fights um you know and fights that i won it was fights that i that i that i took on short notice i was like fighting like every like two three weeks wow and i had like i had like 10 fights in my first amateur amateur year of competition so the fights that I won were the fights that I actually took on like two weeks, three weeks notice where I had no idea who my opponent was. And it was just me getting in the gym and just preparing for every single thing that can happen. Right. Um, so now going pro, that's what I look for. You know, when I'm training with my, when my kickboxing coaches, we're just doing combinations that work for me that I want to do, that I'm going to do. Right. Um, when we come in here and um, I sit in the training center and work with the team, you know, we have... 30 guys on our team that come from various backgrounds, whether, you mm -hmm. know, it's Dutch style kickboxing, pure Muay Thai, whether it's jujitsu, whether it's wrestling. And I get in with all those guys and I'm getting experience, experience in all these positions and being put in the worst positions. Um, I'm used to it. So I like to just prepare for everything and not prepare for a specific opponent. So even though I've, I've watched some of those fights, like I, I, now what I do is I watch fights and I watch tendencies. I watch what a guy does when he gets hit. I, does he okay. does he try to brawl? Does he try to get technical? Does he try to shoot for a takedown? I watch those type of tendencies. Some um, more generalized exactly. things yeah. than like, oh my god, he threw a right hand and then that guy got a takedown. Yeah, then... yeah. It's just it's it. Every fight is different. Right. You know, no one fights the same. And it's funny to say that we. Uh, oh, I was gonna say we had a. What's his name that we both fought? Michaels. You and me, we both fought him. Michael. Oh, um, Michael, Michael. Um, him. Um, <laughs> that guy. We Kevin, Ma beat Kevin up. Mitchell. Kevin Mitchell. Yes. Yes. That's his name. Yes. Um, and 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 he, I, I go switch opponent and end up fighting him, and uh, that I get went in with a game plan for that fight, and it was wrestling and takedowns and controlling right. the fight for once having a game plan because I normally brawl a lot <laughs> and, and after, first, after the, the third round it's my only fight that's gone to a decision um, first thing he said he goes dude I thought you were going to stand up with me <laughs> <laughs> he goes I watched your fights I watched some of your knockouts I thought we were going to be kickboxing and like you said, he went in thinking that this is what it's going to be and it was the complete opposite. Right. So I think it's very good to do that. I think it's obviously good to watch for tendencies and if someone has a killer left hook, for example, be aware of that left hook. Right. But you, you, at the same time, you got to go in and, and with your game plan, what, what you're going to do, yeah. not worrying about what they're going to do. Definitely. I think so. part of being a fighter, uh, I see it in all the guys I train with and girls, is that 
you get in there and you feel your opponent out. Mm-hmm. That's part of fighting. Yeah. It's I like mean, weight cutting. It's all just a part of the game. Yeah, you hear every announcer talk about it in the beginning of the first round where there's a boxing fight, kickboxing fight, or like, oh, that was a filling out process. That's a filling right. out process. It's a real thing. A lot of the big guys do it. Yeah. Leona Machida, you see him, yeah. he's slow in the beginning. He likes to feel his guys out. Anderson Silva, GSP. Yeah. It's it's a common yeah, thing at a high a, level. Yeah, it's a definitely a real thing, and it, and it's very very important. And you gotta you got you you gotta be able to think and improvise on the fly. You gotta be able to right. do it. Um, again, going in there for the specific game plans, um, thinking this guy's gonna do that. It's, it doesn't always work out. I, I feel like ninety five percent of the time it doesn't work out because guys right. in the gym, you know, you, you try to look at their last three fights. Those guys go into the gym and try to correct the things that they did wrong. So while you're sitting there right. looking at, okay, I'm gonna exploit this, he may have just spent all day in the gym for the last eight weeks Trying correcting never that. to do that you again know what I mean? and then you right. go in there looking for it and it never comes and then you get clipped and knocked out you right. get taken down you know for three five three three rounds five rounds whatever and then it's just you know then you're like well back to the drawing board right you know, so. it's like everyone uh trains to practice defending ronda rousey's arm bar and then she gets that liver shot on the, uh, yeah. sarah kaufman yeah. or whoever it was and it's like you, you can't train for one specific thing you have exactly. to just you, oh, yeah, you want to be aware of it. You want to be, you know, aware of it when it comes. You mm-hmm. know, obviously, you you know what you want to have some awareness that it's going to be there. You just don't completely ignore if someone has a, a really skilled, you know, move like mm-hmm. as she does. But yeah, you go in there and you're thinking, okay, well, I'm going to be sitting here just waiting for her to judo toss me and armbar me, right. and then you get clipped and knocked out. Right. You know, so um, we're sitting here trying to find out the results for the UFC. We know that. My majority went in there, was it 41 seconds? 41 seconds. Jeez. Knockout. Knockout. Let me just say this. Matt Mitrione needed that win. Uh, I was looking at his record earlier today. He was on a huge winning streak at the beginning of his, yeah. his career. As soon as he hit the UFC, his, his losses and wins were speckled. He hasn't really been on a consistent winning streak since. Um, so, And I think he's at a point where he needed this win. Um, he Not to take away from his skill or anything. He's had some huge wins in the past, but... Uh, Dana White likes to see consistency in guys. And I think he also likes to see action-packed fights. And Matt Mitrione can give an action-packed fight. Absolutely. I was going to say, even if he has three losses in a row, I don't think he'll get kicked out. Just because he's been on the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. And he's always an exciting fight. He's Win crazy. or lose, it's a knockout. Might have been his favor or someone else's. And today it was in his favor. <laughs> Talk about knockout. It seems like there's been a lot of finishes today. Again, we're getting the results as we're sitting here. Twitter is a good thing. Um... And uh, we saw Rothwell uh, defeat Overeem mm. via knockout. And uh, also a quick knockout. And um, Overeem, how long do you think he's got left in the UFC? Uh, he's walking on his last year, yeah, his last may, contract. So if he doesn't get cut, he, he one more loss problem, most likely. Yeah. yeah. You know, it sucks to see him, but um, I feel like he's losing his chin. Seems like he's losing his chin. He recently um, switched camps. He's training over Greg Jackson's yeah. now. Uh, and I feel like ah, uh, I, 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 I get why guys do that, but I kind of hate when guys do that as well too. Um, it's like, it's one thing to go and and, and 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 go to another camp and train and get some different looks, different experience, but to completely go and try to deal with the new coaching staff, especially when, when you're at that high a level. Yeah, at this point in your career, yeah. I mean, the guys had championships in I yeah. think Strike Force, Dream. A couple other organizations, Pride. Yeah. Wins at least, no championships. Yeah, but, but it's but just K1. like you, you see it's far so often guys trade camps and it doesn't doesn't work out for them. In some cases, guys do trade camps and it works out for them, but I think that guy would have been successful no matter where he went. Right. He's just, you know, you know, just him training and being the athlete that, that he is. But, you know, it, going and trading camps doesn't doesn't always work out for you. Doesn't right. He's been jumping a lot as well between yeah. Black Zillions. He was here for a while. He was... Uh, Joachim Engberg from Sweden is a good friend of mine. He was coaching him for as well for a while as well. So, and I think, like I said, you want you want a different look at times. You can bring, especially at that level, you know, you can bring in sparring partners. But at the same right. time, you want you need some consistency. Yeah. You need someone that knows you, knows what you need, knows how to push your buttons in the right direction. Definitely. And, exactly. Uh, it's the same thing in boxing. You see guys jumping camps, and that sometimes it's almost out of desperation. I'm not mm-hmm. sure if that's the case in a real situation, but. Um, you know, sometimes there's bad blood, but you see guys doing it and it doesn't always work out. And then you see sometimes matches their feet. Like um, Amir Khan, a British boxer who's, who was jumping a little bit and now seem to, seems to have found a home for himself. So right. talk about boxing real quick, actually, because I know you're a boxing fan as well. Are you a boxing fan? Yeah, it's to a certain extent. I'm definitely MMA at heart. Um, I feel like MMA is more my generation. When I was coming up, it wasn't really... <laughs> Pulling us old? 
That's what she just called us old. She just called us old. It's true. When I was growing up, MMA was getting hot as hell, and it's all I heard about. It's like I wasn't hearing about the Muhammad Ali's and uh, you know, and the Floyd Mayweather's. I was hearing about like Tito Ortiz and Frank Mir and all these guys. So, uh, but the filling out process that we're talking about, Floyd Mayweather fighting next week uh, right. rematch against El Chino um, Maidana. There's not going to be a fill out no. process there. No, no. But that doesn't have a fill out process yeah. as it is. Yeah. Um, do, do you think, do any of you think that he won the first fight? I would have to go back and watch it. I watched it three times. I don't think he did. I don't think so either. No. I, I know he felt he won it. I thought Mayweather won it. Uh, and as the filling out process, Mayweather always has a filling out process. Right. Rematches don't seem to work in anyone's favor but Mayweather. So it'd be interesting <laughs> to see what Maidana would do differently. But. The rounds that he put it on him, he put it on yeah. him. Right. He did what people, and it's funny because I've said it, overhand right left hook is what I think is going to beat Mayweather one day just because of the style of boxing that he has, the overhand right. And he was clubbing that overhand yeah. right and throwing the left hook. you got to get Mayweather against the ropes. But can he do it this time around? I don't Prediction think so. Nah, I don't think so. I think Mayweather, um, again, towards the end of his career, it's, it's, it's more of a money thing as well. It's always been a money thing with him, I guess. Yeah, yes. <laughs> money. But um, um, he, you know, he, he said it. He, he, he wanted to kind of stand toe to toe a little bit more to please the fans. He wants he wants people buying his pay per views. He wants exciting fights, and that's what he did. You know, now with all the, the the talk and you know people saying he lost, he cares about his record. He wants to retire undefeated. That's that's his whole thing. Right. He's gonna go out there and I think he's just gonna box him to death. He's gonna outbox him to death. And Maidana's gonna swing wild. He's gonna miss a lot. He, he does. I don't think he has the footwork to keep up with him to catch him. Um, not to say he couldn't clip him. He could, he could very easily clip him. The guy has a lot of power. There was a lot of awkward, you know. That's I have a lot of problems when, when people are just like throws like just really really awkward Great stuff. Angles. It's just you're not used to seeing it. You're used to being in the gym and being technical with your coach, and they have these punches coming at an angle. So um, I mean, he could definitely catch him, but I think Mayweather is he's, he's too quick. He's too smart. I think he's just gonna outbox him. He's gonna move. Maidana's gonna wear out in the first. Since six rounds, seven rounds, this punch is going to start coming slower and he's just going to get picked apart like every single Mayweather fight we've seen before. Right. This would be number 47 for Mayweather if he mm-hmm. wins this. That, that is insane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, boxing coach uh, Susan James said that this is it. Maidana's going to beat him because of his really? private life. But no, I have to agree with, 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 with you, Tyron. I don't think uh, it's going to be less aggression than last time. I don't think Mayweather's going to take as much right. risk as he did last time. And I think it's going to be a boxing clinic again. Um, the main event hasn't come up yet. So let's have a prediction on that for the UFC Fight Night 50. It's not in yet. Not in yet. So without looking, we're going to look at the computer. Yes, it's because they're just coming out right now. Um, Jacare Souza versus uh, Gegard Mosasi. And it's actually a rematch. A lot of people that just followed the UFC might not know that. Right. Uh, a f- crazy ending to the first fight uh, where Jacare was on top and um, uh, Gegard actually upkicked him. Knocked right. him out. Yeah. That was in Dream. Yes. A long what? time ago. That was a long time ago. I yes. Uh, so. Gegard Masasi just lost to Leona Machida in February. That was his mm-hmm. last fight. Um, he beat Mark Munez in May before that. And uh, he, he was the main event in Sweden uh, when Alex originally was supposed to fight Alexander Gustafsson and, uh-huh. uh, for the main event. And it's funny because I... So, you know, I play a lot of April Fool jokes, and that was gonna be my April Fool's joke that year. What was that, it gonna be? That Alex Anderson Gustafsson was injured and it was gonna be able to <laughs> fight. And then the day before it comes out, I'm like, someone stole my idea. But it was, <laughs> but it, it was, was a, real. It was real. It was, and it was the day before as well. And then I got a lot of stick actually because I broke the news that it was gonna be the ex murderer Evandale Silva coming in and take uh, Alex's place because he posted it on Twitter real quick and. Being part of, you know, King Seven May and Rafael Cordero, I right. checked with Verdum. Fabrizio Verdum, I said, is he gonna he's like, Yeah, yeah, he's on the way to the airport right now and he's gonna fly over to Sweden, he's gonna take the fight. So I thought I was breaking the news. It's like from inside the camp, this is happening, find let's say was going to Sweden. <laughs> And I don't know if it's not a Brazilian thing that April Fool's jokes only allowed to happen from 12.01 a.m. when <laughs> Brazilians out there until 11.59 p.m. that day. You can't continue it for two days. No? <laughs> no. It has to be the day off. So a uh, five-day ritual, dude. Th- apparently. Apparently. <laughs> I got a lot of stick for that. For anyone that gave me crap for that, I just want to say it wasn't my fault. 
It was Vanderlei's and Verdum's fault. Oh, blame it on Vanderlei and Verdum. That's Verdum nice. Take it. Those Verdum are two take Brazilians it. I do not want mad at me. I, I was going to say, I'm going to send this to them. We'll yeah, no, yeah, it's true. Uh, Vanderlei, yeah, it was funny, but it was a little bit too I long. drove by Verdum, Verdum's so camp today. Huh? I drove by Verdum's gym today. Um, I never knew Lincoln, where it was. Yeah. Lincoln Boulevard in Venice. Yes, yeah. trained there for a long time. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Fabrizio, that went since they opened it. Looks like a quaint little place. Yeah, it, it's a great spot, Lincoln Boulevard. You know, it's yeah. a busy boulevard here in Los Angeles. And, uh, Definitely. It's funny, you know, I've known Fabrizio since, you know, he was not doing so well back in strike force just been cut from the ufc and right. i was with him when he got the call for fedor to fight fedor it's funny actually he kind of crashed his car bumped his car into something when he was parking and i was no. in my car next to him I'm like fabrice what what would you just what just happened what? what are you doing you didn't see that wall behind you and he goes man i just got the call i'm gonna fight fedor i'm a little, i got a little bit nervous <laughs> oh my gosh that is so funny but uh but back to to Gegard, um i have to say I've never seen someone so calm. I was with Gegard a lot because his manager, Nima, from Alchemist, is a good friend of mine. So I spent a lot of time with him in, in, in Stockholm. And he didn't know whose opponent was going to be for until 48 hours before the weigh-ins. And it was Ili Latifi, another Swede who cut, I don't know how much weight, drove up from the south of Sweden to Stockholm, still not knowing if he was going to be allowed to fight. Wow. And uh, and Gegard was just like, I said, I said, are you not a little bit frustrated that you don't know who your opponent is going to be? It's like, ah. I wish I just found out who it was. And uh, that he's was gamer. him. Oh, it's, it's so calm. It's like he's going to go for to have lunch with someone. And then uh, Ryan Couture was a co-main event. And I was calling Ryan for that fight. And then uh, Gago was next up, right? And you, right. you see guys in the changing rooms and they're screaming and sweating. And Gago was out again, just looking like <laughs> he was going to church uh, or a mosque. Or, <laughs> but he was so calm and and uh, picked by. I, I I think this is gonna be a very. Some fans might not enjoy it because it's not gonna. I don't think it's gonna be the fastest paced fight, but it's gonna be a very very technical fight. Yeah, I always like Gegard Mousasi. Um, and the winner, picker, Gegard. Gegard. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with Jacare by submission in the fourth round. Submission. Look at yeah. you. I put it out there. All right, wait. We got we got to make specific predictions. I say Gegard. Third round, TKO. Really? Yeah. I think it will go the distance. I think it really? Would, yeah, absolutely. I think they're both too technical. I don't. I don't think Gago's ever been caught. Maybe once in the submission, and uh, he's very good in the ground. Very, very well rounded. Mm -hmm. um, knockout. Don't see that happening. He's when he has nineteen wins by KO. Yeah. No, he can. No, he, he can definitely. He definitely punch. has the power. He, he, yeah. He. Oh, he's proved. Proved it. He's knocked Jacare out before. Right. But, um, yeah, that, that is true. So, but I, I don't know. Jacare has come back and he's on a winning streak as well. Yeah. I think a decision win for Gegard. Okay, yeah. Decision. Do you, do you know, uh, I'm looking Jacare at my notes in, right yeah. now. Jacare hasn't lost since 2011. I remember it for Strike Force for the title. He lost the title. Yeah. 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 That's, that's six fight win streak that he's on. So if he loses tonight, that'll be. A shocker for everyone, I think. See if the results are in yet. Yeah. He check beat right now. Robbie Lawler back in Strike Force. Do you remember that? Huh? He beat Robbie Lawler back in Strike Force. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yes. It's crazy how you see these guys, you know, whether they are in Bellator or Strike Force or Dream or Pride or K1, whatever it is, and you see them then, and now you see them in UFC, and it's like so many fluctuations. Like they either rise to the top super fast. Or they stay on this, you know, slow streaming rise to, the, uh, you know, climb to the top. It's it's funny how much stuff changes when the UFC comes into play. Yeah, and uh, and the biggest you saw, you know, the pride stars coming into the UFC. Yeah, a lot that's of people a don't example. realize this. You know, it's a huge difference fighting in a ring versus fighting in a cage. Oh yeah. And and people, that some guys like. Uh, Croco really didn't even train in a cage. You know, it's a, it's a right. difference. A lot of the Japanese fighters come into the UFC as well. Done great in in, in, in organizations in, in Japan where it's mm -hmm. a ring. And, you know, it's a lot more technical when there's a ring. And wrestling definitely benefits you when, when it's a cage. Mm -hmm. And we see the American wrestlers. And, and there's very few that really made it to the top um, coming from, from, from other organizations. Except from Strike Force, you had some really top top gamers from strike force obviously right. it's a whole um, other it's a whole other sport when it's against the cage i mean it's a whole other thing we train 
it's Absolutely. a whole other uh, dynamic to MMA. It's like working the clinch, uh, working takedowns from the cage. It's a, it's a whole other game. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have guys like Randy Couture who, who made a career of pushing guys against, yeah. against the cage and right. just, just pummeling them and beating them up. Right. Um, you know, and, and inside of a ring when the ropes, when guys can, where there's, where, where there's gift to it and you can push back, you can't really, you know, you try to throw an elbow and a guy leans back on the ropes, you can't really put force on it and right. hit him. You can't really control him the way you want to control him. You know, and then, you know, some guys would get caught in submissions and try to roll outside of the ring. And, you know, that, that, you <laughs> have know. Have you ever fought in a ring? Um, yes, I have. I, it was my last amateur fight, um, in Vegas. Um, I took this fight, like, on a week's notice, drove out there. Um, I thought it was going to be in a cage. I didn't think it was going to be in a ring. Um, and I was oh, like, no. crap. And the guy I was facing was a wrestler. So I was like, okay, if he takes me down, I might have no cage to, to wall walk on. Right. Um, and it was, it was funny because I ended up taking him down five times in that fight, and he took me down once, which I have n- – and again, taking the fight on short notice, not knowing anything about the guy and just preparing for everything um, helped, me, helped me win that fight and do things that I'm not used to doing, which is taking people down. And, um, right. Um, so, yeah, fighting in a ring is, is interesting. I've also fought in a ring a couple times um, in my pro career as well too. Um, and it's just it's different. It's different. What do you like better? I like um, honestly for me as a striker, I like the ring because I feel like I can corner people. And okay. I have a very aggressive style where I like to I like to own the center of the ring and where as a cage you can kind of circle a little bit and you right. can really cut people off. And the ring you can you can trap a guy into a corner and it's you know it's, it's hard you know it's it's hard for them to move. So as a striker, I, I prefer the ring, but. Um, you know, there's really no no big outlet for the ring anymore now, so right. you have to get used to the cage. You know, so agree, agree, and um, I want to mention one more fighter today. Oh, John Luazo, uh won as well. Oh, nice. Um, open up a huge cut on on my. Did he, get, yeah. did he get a fight night bonus again? Probably, probably. <laughs> we don't know yet since the last main event isn't over. But uh, just I, I spar with him as well, and I'm it's not, not surprised. Yet. No, you know, just look at Lawson's. Uh, record you know he's got three times as many fights almost yeah. as right. as uh just and his stand-up is really really good and yeah. uh just is more, definitely better on the ground and it's hard even if you have a year's practice a year and a half two years to get to that level you know it takes years to get yeah. to get to that level and the experience as well I th- yeah I, th- I thought that was a really dangerous fight for michael chiesa because his 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 style is his wrestling style um and joe lozon is amazing on the ground yeah. and he's really good on the feet so it's like pick your poison you yeah. know so and then uh, Chris, the real deal, Bill. Did you spar with him over Pikachu ever? Um, no, I never really, I never really spar with him. I was supposed to f- to fight him before he went to the yes, UFC, but Obama um, for the yeah, title. Yeah, but um, um, you know, good for him, man. He's he, again, he's he's in one of those guys who's who's, who's worked hard. Um, you know, we kind of came up at, in the Batman organization where we kind of figured we'd fight each other one day. Um, but we were every time we see each other, we fought on the same card or whatever. You know, it was, it was mutual respect. It was you know, it's cool. You know, he's a young dad, just like I am as well too. Um, you know, I mean, he he does everything he does for his family and for his son. You know, so I can I can respect that, and he works hard. Uh, you know, so I'm good for him. You know, I'm glad to see him doing well. I was surprised he didn't get into the UFC after the the show. You know, he's still undefeated. And right. There was a couple of things here and then um, issues, I guess, and then. It's funny, I, I heard that he's possibly broken his hand today, um, which he had oh, busted really? inside the show, yeah. and then it busted again on my head, yeah. and it was actually out for a while from that, and, um, you know, he is a game, he's very he busted athletic. it on your head? We were sparring, it was, he caught me on top of the head, and it wasn't like he really? hurt me, but it was, it was right, a good, right. was a he good hurt punch, his hand. he hurt his hand, and we were boxing, kickboxing with takedowns, and uh, um, I actually didn't realize who it was, because a lot of times... He has a headgear on, and I didn't. I we were just training, and it was going on, and I'm like, damn, this kid's got got really good wrestling. Right. And that's people might not even know it because of you know if you've just seen him recently in the UFC with he that likes, flying knee. Yeah, he likes and, to throw. Man. Yeah, he likes to throw, but he's got really, really good wrestling. Right. So I think he would do well in the UFC. Do you actually. think he's the real deal? That's a good question. <laughs> he's definitely Bill. Yeah. Well, hopefully, I mean, hopefully he doesn't continue to have this hand problems. We, we you have seen it with a lot of a lot of fighters, guys like Uriah Faber, constantly breaking their hands, yeah, right? And this, that and the other, and it's like, you know, over time that could that could you know cause arthritis and stuff like that. You see yeah. it in boxing a lot, where you know just bad hands. So, you know, but hopefully the you know the UFC, I know they have a good you know insurance policy. They can you know go in there and do something about fixing his hand, or he can get his hand fixed or something, or he can go to a hand specialist and. Because, it, it, I mean, to break your hand three times or, you know, hurt it that bad three times right. in, you know, like two years, that's, 
you know, that's a that's a constant problem. You know, once you break it once, it's it's easy to keep breaking it again. You know, and it's it, over time it could you know do some real nerve damage or anything like that. You know, we've seen it with Crow Cop. You know, Crow Cop would hardly ever throw his right hand. Yeah. He would hardly ever throw his right hand. And, right. You know, that's from years of K one and you know having nerve damage in his shoulder and his hand and hurting his hands. You know, so hopefully. You know, you can get that fixed, you know, because I'd be, you know, that would it's, suck. It is hard, and it's, you know, once you have the injury, and not just physically that potential break mentally, again, but yeah. mentally all the time, it's like, oh, you know you've hurt it before, you know that feeling, and, and, and it's hard. Got to break coconuts with your hand. That's, just, that's the only <laughs> way of getting out of it. Is that's that how I'm, you do hand conditioning, Marcus? <laughs> coconuts. I'm, that's, I'm, what I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm so interested to see about how Anderson's going to come back, whether he would throw with his that. kick. Yeah. yeah. You know, whether he would throw his kick. I've, I, seen some, I've seen some videos of him kicking bags and, like, doing sparring, and he doesn't see, he doesn't seem confident in throwing that left kick yeah you know and it, it would I, I it would suck man I, I like anderson he's one of my favorite fighters of all time to watch and um you know hopefully you know let's hope that's not a recurring yeah, problem yeah. I, I have nightmares of that of that oh man i didn't play in my I head i have really chicken skinny legs man and after <laughs> watching that i was like i don't think i'll ever throw a kick again <laughs> it's bad I imagine the the mental blockage he must have. Like you yeah. said, it looks like he hesitates. Yeah. How could you not? Yeah, that was one of the worst breaks I have ever seen in my in my life watching uh, any type of fighting. Yeah, it's something in the water, and I guess in MMA, man. Because right after that, um, Tyrone Spong broke his slight leg doing the yeah. same right. things. Same thing. it's like, oh. it's someone showed me uh, the original one that was on YouTube a long the time Hill. ago. Cool yeah, 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 the one. yeah, that was and bad. Someone showed that to me the day before. If I was like, "Hey, Mox, have you seen this?" You and and I'm, um, it's actually for a tight to find Mexico kid box. And I looked at, I'm like, "Why would you show me that? <laughs> why, before? why now? Yeah, that and is it, just cruel. It is, and it's. I, I think sometimes people don't realize, but <laughs> as much as you you don't want to think about it, you yeah. will think about it. Something like that as well. And it's so brutal. Right. Like a cut is a cut. You know, it doesn't. Yeah. You get used to seeing blood. Right, but, but a break like that. Same with you know uh, Nogueira's arm. Yeah, like, uh, just tap, just tap please. Tap. <laughs> yeah, anytime I see like a nasty arm bar, and the arms like hyper extended, popping out this way, I'm like, please just tap. If you don't tap, are you really gonna get back up and keep fighting? You're not even like, allowed to. That's the point. Like a referee sees it bro- broken. Well, stop Forrest playing. Griffin. I don't know if you remember this. Uh, it was like before. Tough one. I've heard of it. Yeah. He went on to the Ultimate Fighter season one with an arm that I don't even know how to He had a lump in his arm because it. it was a constant – because he, he had a break in a previous fight where it, he got arm barred, it broke, got out of it. Got back up. And knocked the guy knocked out with his other out. hand. Yeah. And so he had like, the entire time during the show, he had a lump. You can a clear lump on his forearm. Oh, it it, it almost looked like the elbow was coming out the wrong side. Yeah. Like it was so dislocated, so messed up. He fought the whole season like that. Um, clearly didn't affect. It's him weird. Too though. Much. I'm in. A, I'm in a different stance though with it because I've 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 had it happen to me twice in a fight. Once in my amateur career and once in my pro career, where I had an armbar, where someone had an armbar locked in fully on me, where it was like, right. I didn't think I was gonna get out, and for whatever reason, adrenaline, pain tolerance, I didn't tap and got out and ended up winning both of those fights. Hang on, I'd like to really? correct that. Actually, I'd like to correct that. <laughs> When I got injured for RFA in Los Angeles, <laughs> um, you were in an arm, but I was in your corner for that fight when you fought whom I was originally supposed to fight, um, uh, Chavez. And after the first round, you were in an armbar in that fight. You came back between the rounds. You're like, damn, he had my deep in that armbar. I think I popped my arm. I don't think... He goes, I, I said, are you right? He goes, yeah, I'm fine for the fight, but I definitely popped it. Definitely popped the arm. That's two. <laughs> three. That, that's what I'm talking about, though. You said pro debut. I didn't, no, I was about pro, one of my pro fights. No, not our pro debut. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that was that was the second fight that I was talking oh. about. But yeah, I don't know. It's weird, man. Like I felt him. It went click, 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 and I was like, oh, oh okay. Crap. <laughs> I was like, well, at this point, it's probably how many damage as much as it's possibly gonna be. So I'm not gonna tap. So I'm just gonna try to figure a way to get out of it. You know, I ended up getting out of it. But I've had, but what what was you know, I've had it. It happened to me in an amateur fight, and a guy was like belly down, and I heard the 10 second clap. And my coach was like, Dylan, don't tap, don't tap. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to hold it out. You know, and I got up after the, after the round. I looked at my arm to see if it was broken. Um, and it didn't hurt until the next day. I could, like, barely move it. I was in a sling. So I knew while, you know, this is the fight when I took the fight for you in RFA when, um, when he had me in an arm bar. I was like, if I can get out of it, I know it's not going to hurt right away. And I can still punch and hit with it, but it's right. going to hurt the next day. Uh, you know, so I had that experience, and, and, I, and I knew that that was going to happen. Um, you know, so... 
But yeah, I mean, I, he popped my elbow. I thought I was like, oh man, my, it's probably broken or something. I thought something, but a lot of times what happens is you get the capsules pulled. You know, you get the capsules popped in there, and then you, that's the little here, the clicking you hear. You know, and the little burst of sac that's that's in the elbow, like you know, fills up, gets swollen, or whatever. But I kind of I feel like after Misha Tate, guys are not allowed to tap after arm bars. But <laughs> that's very that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> I mean, that is a really good actually. point. <laughs> but I was gonna point out, you fall right off the oh, for the title. We have a result. Really? On the main event. Fourth round submission. Third round submission. Oh, I was close. Really? Jacare. I was close. What did I tell you? Beat Musasi. What did third I tell you? Am I, not, victory. am I not the best? Am oh, not the best? that was really? good. With 30 seconds left in round three. This was almost round four, so I was close. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, okay, so I'm Pretty wrong. good, Mr. Tarion. Pretty uh, good. You should put me good. on a panel. I should be on the Fox Wait. Sports 1 panel. Why would you want to be Dana on Fox White. Not, Why would you want to be we there? We are MMA here? Nick. Yeah. Well, I was under the impression that I was going to be on the panel here, and then I was announced as a guest. So <laughs> that makes you, know, you more special. So that's so obviously I didn't get the job here. <laughs> so I'm trying to throw my resume out there. Fox Sports One, Karen Bryant, if you're listening. Traitor. Yeah, Traitor. yeah. I'm just saying. But if you guys want to hire me, I, I'll totally come back every day, every Friday. I think <laughs> Karen Bryant's coming on our show. Uh, either next week or the following week. So oh, I have my, I'll a put in a good one. I have my uh, resume. Yeah, yeah, she's a good yes. friend of yours. I have my so resume. I'll make sure to let her know not to get you on. The, uh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if, if ever needed. Actually, you know what? You, I think you, you, you'd be good on there. You're funny. Oh, thank so, you. That, that works. Oh, thank you. As, <laughs> as, as, Christos well, doesn't think I'm funny. I was going to say, Christos doesn't think I'm funny. We were funny. in San Diego and he goes, man, those guys are the funniest black guys I know. And, and oh, I'm goes, talking about I'm standing right here. And he's like, he's like, you're not that funny, man. He's like, you're cool, you're a good friend, but you're not that funny. I'm like, really? <laughs> so I've actually have been writing, have been writing jokes because I want to do the next comedy show oh. to prove to Christos that I am very funny. Good so for Christos, you. So Christos, you're gonna see that I'm very funny. And he can prove that he pr- he can pronounce the word breakfast. I don't think he can. I don't think he can. Well, that could be a challenge. No, okay, it's okay. a challenge. There's a lot challenge. of words. Tri- challenge accepted. Christos Yagos. I'll do a comedy show. Pick five words you cannot pronounce and prove that you can pronounce them now. Tarion Ware is going to do stand-up but see, comedy. See, that's, that's not fair that you want him to pick because... He would choose words like he, island, yeah. the... Yeah. Hmm. And then he might, in his head, think that he's pronouncing it correctly already and then he won't be able to correct himself. Yeah. So... He can, he can use Google. Out. So we have to... We we have to pay attention to him. I know I he know talks. he has trouble with breakfast. He has probably, it's more, it comes out like breakfast. Breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Christos. <laughs> we love you, Christos. <laughs> so October tenth, you're fighting uh, for defending your title. And for you that don't know, you went thirteen pro fights, eleven and two in wow. fifteen months. Fifteen months. That that's like insane. Pro mixed martial arts. That is, that, uh, do you know anyone that's been as busy as you? Maybe Jeremy Horn. Yeah, oh, that, the, the plan <laughs> okay. that guy has over 100 fights. <laughs> well, that's just insane. But it was, the, and that's <laughs> another thing, though. If you have great jiu-jitsu, you go down to the ground, you submit yeah, people. But I'm a striker. Yes. So I take, well, I don't want to give myself too much credit because I, I do have a lot of, like, first-round finishes. So, like, so a lot of those, like, at least, you know, I have, like, four, four it's four first-round knockouts? Yeah, four first-round knockouts. So, it's, like, four of those fights, I don't want to say didn't count, but I didn't take any damage. But the constant vigorous uh, of training in general and training for the fight, you Camp know, Camp alone difficult. is yeah. vigorous, so give yourself yeah. credit for all 13. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I attribute to that, you know, training at System Training Center, Hawthorne, California, by the way. You know, you know, we I've I've been to a lot of gyms and it's just like you have a bunch of like guys that are just trying to like knock each other's heads off all the time. Right. And in here it's like we spend Monday through Thursday where we're doing technical stuff and then Friday we have sparring. And even the sparring, you know, no one I don't I don't think anyone's been knocked out in sparring or even come close to being knocked out in our sparring sessions. You know, and you, you know, it's a tribute to, you know, guys coming in there being technical. And you can look, you if you watch if you watch our fighters and that's not to pat our, ourselves on the back or anything like that or you know, but which I am, but um, <laughs> Which is you what know, I'm doing. but if you if you watch our fighters, you know, generally our fighters are very technical. We 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 don't have guys to just go in there and and just brawl. We have people that go in there and technical have actual good technique. And you go to a lot of gyms, and you see these guys on pads, you see these guys doing jujitsu, and like, oh, they look great. But you watch them fight, and they're just brawling, brawling, brawling. Right. It's because they go in there, and it's not that the the, the coaches are not you know teaching them you know technical stuff, but it's just that when the sparring comes around, you're sparring two two or three times a week, and everyone's trying to take your your head off. You don't have a chance to work on things. You don't have a chance to work on head movement and footwork and technique. You're right. just you're just throwing you know you're just you know throwing you know 
whatever techniques out there, right. you know, and when you, 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 you're you going to train, you're going to fight the way you train, mm -hmm. you know, when you spar, that's how you're going to fight, you know, so, you know, I feel like that's, it's a huge, you know, attribute that, you know, that I have that, that we have that at the gym, that we're, we're technical, so when I go into the fights, I fight technically, you know, and our, our fighters, we fight technically, and it, and it allows us, um, you know, we don't have injuries going into fights, and, and it allows us to be able to, you know, at a drop, you know, you know, someone calls us up and like, hey, you know, we need you to fight in three or four days, whatever, go out there and fight because, you know, we're not getting beat up in practice every day. Right. Um, finally, two predictions. Actually, two predictions for you, one prediction for both of you. Um, just because it's Amenet and, and Alex and the good there's been love, there's been a Twitter war between Alex and um, Rumble Johnson. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, uh, seen that. Yeah, you've seen, seen that? that? Yeah. And, um, it's finally going to happen now. I'm actually, I think uh, uh, Anthony got into his head a little bit because he could, he was, you know, been told that he's going to be, he's going to fight the winner between DC and, and John Jones. Right. Um, he was originally supposed to fight John Jones himself. Now he's sealed up from, from his knee surgery. And, um, right. Uh, he kind of got into this Twitter war and I was like, well, I'll sign the paper. I'll fight you. That's a risk. Cause if he doesn't win that fight, he's obviously not next in line for that title. Yeah. Right. So, um, Anthony Johnson versus Alexander Gustafsson. Both of you. Alexander Gustafsson. I say Alexander Gustafsson. Are you just saying that because you know nope. this is going to be shit? No, not no, at all. No. Not at all. I mean, you can as send it out to I Anthony. Like to I, I, like, I, like, I love watching the, the new Anthony Rebel Johnson. I love watching the old one fight. It's too bad he couldn't make weight at 170, but uh, whatever. I'm just cutting 50 pounds. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. But um, I, I like the new Rebel Johnson. I like I, he's really, really aggressive. He's finishing guys. But I don't know. I, I, think, the, I, I think, you know, watching... You know, watching Gustafson, what he did against Jones, and watching a lot of his other fights, he's a really good stand-up technical fighter, um, and he, he really good defensive wrestling, mm -hmm. um, has good wrestling of his own, you know, as well, too. Um, but, but uh, again, he's you know, that technical strike, and I think he, he can avoid the heavy shots, take Anthony into the into the second and third rounds, or the fifth round of its main event. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they oh, it'll be fine. Event. Yeah, it'll be main event. So, you know, take him into those deep waters and, you know, and, and pick him apart and um, maybe get a knockout, but I'll probably see it. I, I say Gustafson by decision. I th I, again, I'm Swedish, but I think so. Same same uh, line of thoughts where Alexander just it's got great defense and uh, Johnson's never really liked getting hit and right. Alex can definitely punch. So, um, I, I think so too. And then the last, the last one for you, uh, prediction on October 10th against Jeff Martin. Uh, I don't like to make predictions, but you know, about uh, well, in yeah, about myself, yeah, but um, because I mean, anything can happen in MMA, and I don't want to go out there with like, oh, I gotta do this now because I predicted it. But uh, I mean, my, I, I always try to finish. I always try to finish. You know, whether it's a submission or a knockout. Um, I think it'll be pretty tough to submit. I mean, he's a brown belt or whatever, but um, you know, I could probably rock him and maybe catch him in a submission, or whatever. But um, I say, I say, I uh, knockout. Let me finish him. That's what I'm gonna Any go for. Round? Um, third round. Third round finish, October 10th. You heard it from the star himself. And you can watch it because it's gonna stream. And uh, oh, better yet, just come. Just, just come. yes, if you're in Los Angeles, absolutely yeah. come. But if you're in Europe, you should you should still come. Yeah, Where's right. the exact location? It's gonna be at the the Commerce Coast Casino. Coast Casino. Uh, Commerce great Casino. Casino. The casino's great. Great food there. You can gamble afterwards. You can Ooh, I'm gamble on me. You can bet on me as well too. If you want to put some yeah, money, down, money down, slide some my way when I win. I'm <laughs> I, I'm gonna be his bookie. So that's right here, guys. All right, Daria. You All heard right, it man. from us. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Daria, as always. And Tara, thank you for coming on. I'm sure we'll see you again soon on here. Hopefully, as a not a guest. He's gonna leave in a flash. <laughs> on the panel, I'm gonna leave in a flash because I'm gonna walk out with the sweater. I think. You should. I, like it. I, like it. I like it. Bye.